Happy New Year and welcome back to another Amazon selling video. This year in 2024, I want to take direct response and feedback from you and create the videos that you want to see. So if this is your first time here and you enjoy this video, go ahead and hit subscribe and look at all the past videos I've done. But if you have something that you wanna see from me in 2024, please do let me know because I will be taking that feedback and making sure I'm making the videos that mean the most to you. If you've already been watching these videos and you're not yet subscribed, please also hit that subscribe button because again, it means a lot to me and it costs you nothing. And I'm just trying to hit that 100,000 mark for nothing else than to say that I've done it. But yeah, thanks. So I will still be doing my sourcing videos all year round, but I do wanna add in the videos that you enjoy. So I'm also gonna be doing live uh, YouTube lives every month. So the January one is January 22nd. So mark your calendar, pretty sure that's next week to answer your questions live and talk about what's coming up this year. Also have an exciting announcement that my Bolo group now has monthly hangout calls every month. So this week actually, so the 17th, we'll be having our January hangout call. So if you wanna join that group, it's a really awesome group of sellers. They are helpful. You get Bolos, which is be on the lookout, right? Things that we're sourcing right now in January, then in February, March, all year long, we're sharing leads that we find that make a profit and it gives you this whole long list of leads to go off of. But more than that, it gives you a community and that is so important to growing your Amazon business. So you can join the community today, hang out with me live, ask questions, introduce yourself, whatever you wanna do. January 17th is our call. So if you're in the Bolo group already, mark your calendars. Those are an event in the Facebook group where you can um, hit that you're going or RSVP or whatever that is. But yeah, that's in the group right now. So definitely hang out there. You can join the Bolo group today at yoursellingguide.com slash Bolo. And I would love to see you there and connect with you there. Okay, this is my annual no fun video because it's all about income tax and who wants to do income tax, right? But we have to do it. So it comes around every year. This is the new 2024 edition with all the new laws and rules and blah, blah, blah. I'm also gonna talk about hiring an accountant, hiring a bookkeeper, and I'm gonna dive into every single report that you need to pull either for yourself or for your tax professional. Now I am not covering sales tax in this video because that is a completely different thing. And I have other videos that talk about sales tax, but those are not like an annual thing that we do um, like income tax. So this is just income tax. Also, I am not a tax professional. I hire them, but I am not one. So please run all of this by your CPA or tax professional, bookkeeper, whoever you use to do your taxes, or even if you're just gonna ask them, make a phone call to confirm that everything you're doing is right if you are the one doing your own taxes. So not a tax expert. I've used TurboTax all of my life, all my tax paying life up until four years ago when I hired a bookkeeper, CPA or EA or whatever it was. But anyways, I hired a tax professional to do my taxes for me starting in 2020 and it was a huge relief and I absolutely recommend it if your business is to the size or even if you just have the money and you wanna invest in it because let me tell you, it is a lot of stress off my shoulders not having to figure that part out. But before that, I always did my own income taxes on TurboTax. Now, if you're a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, it's actually really easy to do your own taxes, even if you're brand new to Amazon selling, because you're just basically putting in that you have a self-employed um, business and then you add all the expenses that come along with it. I loved TurboTax and I know not everyone likes TurboTax, but to me, I liked it just because it was super easy. It had like the different things it asked me, I said, I have this business. Okay, do you have these expenses? And then it would literally walk me through kind of like a worksheet and I'm all about that easy stuff. So I also paid the first year that I did TurboTax, I paid extra to have a professional look at my return before I filed, just to be sure everything was good. I think it was like $150 maybe, and it was well worth it for that peace of mind that I didn't mess anything up. So you don't have to hire someone to do your taxes for you if you do them yourself, and all you've done is added Amazon business, you can probably still do them yourself with these reports that I'm gonna tell you about. There are timestamps on this video, so if you're already like, oh, stop talking, get to the point, go ahead and go to the timestamps and jump to the report that you're looking for. But before I get to the reports, I am gonna talk about hiring an accountant or hiring a bookkeeper because I think it is something that needs to be talked about. And I have not done this on a video yet. So if you wanna hire an accountant or a CPA or um, an EA is like a tax professional, 
or a bookkeeper, I highly recommend doing it because it does take a lot of that stress because we don't know what we're doing, right? Unless you're like an expert and you like that stuff, you're probably like the majority of people who don't know what they're doing and it's kind of scary doing your taxes because you're like, can't do anything wrong or you're gonna go to jail and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's a little bit scary, but it is not that difficult um, to hire a CPA or a bookkeeper. So I highly recommend doing that if you have the budget for it. Now, I'm gonna run you through my experience. I've had two different accountants work for me. So the first one was perfectly fine and then the second one, has been even better. So it's kind of like anything in life, you like wanna look for the best. So if you don't like your doctor, you're probably gonna go get a new doctor, right? If your accountant isn't working for you or your bookkeeper isn't working for you how you think they should be, go ahead and look for another one. A lot of people get stuck in thinking they have to have an Amazon specific accountant and that is not the case. Like you are just running a retail business and it's an inventory based business. So if you talk to an accountant or bookkeeper, you can talk to a lot of different ones. They just need to know that they know how to do inventory based businesses. They can do your Amazon business. It doesn't have to be specific. What happens when you get into those specific niches of accountants that do Amazon? they often charge a little bit more because they got into that niche and they're trying to get everyone that's looking for that. You don't necessarily need that. You, any bookkeeper who knows inventory-based businesses or accountant inventory-based businesses, they will be perfectly capable of doing your books and your business, your taxes. Now the cost for an accountant can vary anywhere from like doing your personal state federal income tax, anywhere from like 200 to $400 a return. It really just depends, or actually can be, I think, Mine is gonna be $600 or 400, I can't remember. But anyways, it can vary based off of the, you know, the scale of your business, how much transactions and all that kind of stuff. But the returns are usually flat rate. If you have a partnership or an S corp, if you filed with the IRS that you're an S corp, you have to file a different return for your business by March 15th. Personal income tax, single member LLC, sole proprietor, all that kind of stuff. That is the normal April 15th deadline or whatever it is. They changed it every once in a while, but whatever that April 15th deadline is, that's normal. But if you are an S corp or a partnership LLC, just remember you have to file that business tax return by March 15th. And that costs more when you have an accountant. So I've paid anywhere from 700 a return to $1,000 a return. Now these are all business expenses, all these returns, all these accountant fees, those are business expenses. They're gonna be write-offs for the following year, but they are costs upfront. So just wanna know that going into it. If you're gonna look into hiring a bookkeeper, those are monthly fees. So again, I've paid anywhere from 300, actually $100 a business, but up to $600 a business. So currently my bookkeeper does all three of my businesses for $700 a month. So my one business, my Amazon business is more transactions, more information. So that one is $500 and I'm getting a deal with the other two businesses because they're more simple for $100 all combined into $700 a month of bookkeeping. Your bookkeeper should be talking to you all the time. I get text messages every Monday. I got them right now from my bookkeeper asking me to do different things in QuickBooks because they're gonna have questions about your various things. They will give you like, if you gotta go get a loan from the bank for some reason, um, not saying you need to do it for Amazon, but like I needed a loan for the shop and everything. So they wanna see your P&Ls, your balance sheets, all of that stuff in QuickBooks that your bookkeeper will have. And so it's just ready to go print out really easy. Bookkeepers vary in expertise because there's, this is not a bad thing, but there's a lot of courses out there teaching people how to be bookkeepers because it is a really cool remote job that you can do. You can do it from anywhere. It's perfect for RVers, but you can do it anywhere. And so with that comes the varying levels of expertise and then the rates with that. So you wanna really kind of interview. Most bookkeepers will let you, or will ask you to like let them into your QuickBooks. They'll look at how many transactions and then they'll give you the rate based off of that. Usually they'll do all that for free because it's kind of like a interview basically. Let's see if you guys work together well. You do wanna work together well. It is a two part partnership, right? So if they're not working for you and it's not working out for you, just say thank you and move on to a new bookkeeper. But I just wanna put that out there that there are a lot of different levels of expertise and um, if it's a really good deal, there might be a reason for that.
Like I mentioned, hiring a bookkeeper and an accountant has been a huge weight off of my shoulders because that is not a part of the business that I care to learn and I don't wanna get into the weeds with. And so I'm happy to hire that out. So if your business has gotten to the place where you can afford those monthly costs, I highly recommend doing that. If at all else, if you don't, if you do your own books, which you are fully capable of doing, if you do your own books, I would definitely look into hiring an accountant CPA to do your taxes for you because they can help you look for different deductions that you may have missed. Now I'm going to get into the different deductions that you can take on your taxes this year and that you should look at if you have not yet done them. Um, if you've never filed like a home office deduction in the past, highly recommend. Again, I'm not a tax expert. I'm just explaining what my accountant has told me and what I've done on my own taxes. And you need to talk to your own accountant or tax professional before doing all these, this advice. Okay. So your home office deduction is a deduction that can really add up to a huge deduction and you should definitely be taking it for your Amazon business. So how you take it is you add up the total square footage of your house. If your garage is part of your house uh, or part of your Amazon um, business, you add that square footage also. I know when you sell houses, sometimes garages aren't technically considered, but this is for your home office. So if you're working out of your garage, definitely include the garage square foot as the total square foot of your house. Then, or apartment, wherever you're working. This goes for apartments too. Then you take you take the square footage of the home office that you're using for Amazon business and you get that percentage. So you'll take your whole home and then what percentage of your office is that whole home? So for ease, we're gonna say it's 25%. That means that you can take 25% of your mortgage payments, your rent payments, your utilities payments, anything that the business shares with you. So if you're using your internet at home, 25% of your internet bill, you can take the home office deduction. Um, if you have a telephone and you use it for business, again, you can take any of those shared expenses, trash, water, all of that stuff, 25% can be your home office deduction. If you have a house that has a basement and you half of your house is the basement and all of your basement is used for Amazon, you could take all half of your mortgage payments, all that kind of stuff. Now, when you're getting into the high ones, again, I'm not a tax professional. I would highly recommend talking to one because this, yeah, just, I'm not one. So I would highly recommend talking to one. If you're gonna take a big chunk of your mortgage or whatever payments and use it as a tax write-off, just double check that it's all in the clear. What my accountant told me is the only things you can't write off are interest payments on your mortgage because that's already a tax deduction elsewhere and your property taxes. Cause again, that's also a tax deduction elsewhere. So those you can't take as your home office, but everything else, all of your shared expenses that your business shares, with out of your home office, you can take those expenses. Business meals are another one. Now, definitely recommend talking to a bookkeeper or an accountant, but your business meals, you can take as a deduction. They need to be, you have to be gone out of your like house for 24 hours. So if you go on an overnight sourcing trip, all the meals you incur, the hotel fees, if you have to pay for parking at the hotel, all that is business expenses that you can deduct on your income taxes. If, however, you have 1099 contractors or people who work for you and you decide to get them all pizza or you got to decide to take them out to dinner or lunch or whatever, that is a business expense because you're only going out because of business, right? So there's different things. Again, really good reason to, even if you just sit down with an accountant and like see if you want them to do your taxes or whatever, it's about $200. In my experience, it's been $200 to sit down with an accountant. I sat down with the three hours. We talked about all different things and $200, well worth the business investment. Hiring people, so 1099 contractors, um, those are all, again, business write-offs. So if you pay someone to help you in your business, then you should be keeping track. Now, you, my accountant said you can literally just go and get like at Office Depot or Staples a blank 1099 form and fill it out at the end of the year or whenever they're done working for you. Um, of what you paid them, and that's the 1099 you give them. But I personally, I use Gusto for my payroll and they, it is a cost. It's an extra cost every month to use Gusto. So if you're um, on the beginning side or you don't have a lot of money, you wanna, I think it's like 50 or $60 every month I pay just to be able to pay contractors with 1099s and then Gusto sends them the 1099s. I highly recommend actually PayPal because PayPal will give them a 1099 at the end of the year. So you don't even have to worry about all that. 
that's how I would pay contractors and that's how I do pay some of my contractors. So definitely look into that if you wanna hire people. Outside of that, anything you, you, the tools and supplies, if you have to get your contractor something, so I don't know what they're doing for you, but let's say you have someone doing online arbitrage for you and you need to get a tactical arbitrage account for them. Well, you can use that as a write-off, those supplies and softwares that you've given to them. Also, if you get them meals, like whatever you decide to give your contractors as a perk of being your employee or whatever, a contractor, then you can do that. Those are all tax write-offs. You wouldn't want to necessarily, again, you're gonna have to talk to an accountant, but you wouldn't necessarily want to give your spouse a 1099 because if you're filing, you're, you know, filing jointly married, then that's all, that business is flowing through that same one. So you wouldn't really wanna go do that. There's also some things you can do with your children. I think they have to be under 18, but if you're paying them, you can pay them a certain wage that's below the standard deduction and they won't have to pay income taxes, but you get that write off for paying someone to help you do that. So again, all different things that it might be worth to sit down with an accountant and ask all these questions. Okay, now we're gonna jump into where to pull the reports. So there are a few different reports that you definitely should pull for your tax uh, purposes. And it doesn't matter when you pull them, you can pull them any time of the year, except for the one, um, one report for FBM, but we'll get into that. So the very first thing you wanna know is how do you pull your 1099 from Amazon? So your 1099 is technically a 1099K, there's like different forms of 1099. The 1099K means that it was electronic transferred funds. So Amazon's electronic, electronically transferring you the your payout money, right? That's where the K comes from. Anyways, the IRS has said in 2025 that the rate will come down to anyone who may, got paid over $600. But as of 2023 tax year, it is, the threshold is $20,000 of gross sales. So $20,000 of money transferred to you or 200 transactions. If you hit that, you will get a 1099 from Amazon. If you were under that, you won't get a 1099 from Amazon, but do not worry. There are actual other reports that everyone should pull that have everything you need to know that would be on the 1099 anyways. So in your Amazon Seller Central account, I always use my desktop for everything, like everything important for Amazon because the app is so glitchy. So in your Amazon desktop account, Seller Central, you're gonna go to reports and then tax document library. And here you'll find your 1099. Now it's not gonna come out till probably the third or fourth week of January. And you'll most likely get an email from Amazon that it's in your account ready for you. You just download that and there you go, you got your 1099. So if you're filling your own taxes out, you got your 1099, it's gonna say all the money that you made. But you didn't really make that money, did you? That's just everything Amazon paid you. So that included all your cost of goods right along with your profit that you made. So that is just, it's gonna look like a huge number and that's one reason why I like TurboTax because it's like you owe this much and then as you put all your expenses, it's like you're getting this refund. So um, just don't freak out because it's gonna look like a lot and you're gonna like, I didn't make that much. It's okay, we're gonna pull another report that's gonna help you get some expenses. Now this other report is called Reports Repository. It's a new report. It was, it's a new name really. It's already been there last year. They just called it a different thing and then the year before they called it something else. So this year it's called Reports Repository. What this report is, it's a snapshot. It's gonna be a one page PDF and it's gonna show all the money Amazon sent you as well as all the different fees that you paid in your Amazon business. So shipping fees, Amazon, um, the professional seller fee, all the FBA fees, every single fee you paid is going to show on this report. So this is a must for everyone, whether you got a 1099 or not, you wanna pull this report. Again, in your Seller Central account, you're gonna to go to payments and then report repository. It's also on your payments, like if you're looking how much you have at Amazon and your account reserves and everything, it's just another tab on there, reports repository. Now under account type, you wanna make sure it probably is auto set to this, but you want all unified reports, transaction types, we want summary, that is a must. And then you want custom range, we're gonna do the whole year. So January 1st to December 31st and then request your report. It takes a little bit, you can hit refresh or just refresh your screen and then you'll come back and it'll say download. Now here is what the report looks like. 
Again, it's just a PDF one page snapshot of everything your business does. So it's got your income. It's all the money that you made that Amazon sent to you. So you can see your sales, non-FBA, um, refunds, product sales, shipping credits, all the different things. You can see the transfer amount. So that's the amount that Amazon would have sent to you. Then you can see all your different expenses. These are the expenses that you want to take your tax write-offs for, right? So you want to do all of your selling fees. You can see them all. All the different things are broken out here. They're just kind of called different things. But even your um, professional selling fee is in one of these fees. Everything is there. And then it also does tax, but that's talking about sales tax. And since Amazon covers that for us, the marketplace facilitator tax, so that's just it's the same number, in and out. It's just, I never saw it didn't have to worry about it. Now, a lot of people want that income on this, this uh, PDF we just pulled, the reports repository, to match their 1099, and it may or may not, because the 1099, I gotta tell you, like two years ago, 2021 maybe, Amazon actually gave me two, and in both of them, I was missing three months, but I definitely was selling those three months, so, and I even emailed like, can you fix it? And they were like, no. So the 1099 is what they sent to the IRS. As long as you are filing your taxes and you're doing everything right, it's not a problem that it doesn't actually match up to what it is. So don't freak out if these numbers don't exactly match on these two reports. You just wanna make sure you're filing your taxes, getting all of your expenses and everything taken care of and making those write-offs. Another report you want to pull is your cost of goods or your inventory valuation report. So this report is called Inventory Ledger in Amazon now this year. They've changed the name. That's what it's called this year. So anyways, they you want to make sure you have this report because it's telling you how much cost of goods you have on hand at the end of the year. And then again, for the following year's taxes, how much you started the year with. Now, why this matters. It may not matter to your business depending how you're doing your inventory. So there's something called cash inventory or accrual inventory. This is not the overall way you file your business. Like you, there is a whole business level, like we're doing cash level or, or accrual level. This is only talking inventory cost of goods. So the way it was explained to me, the cash way is I go to Target today and I buy something for my inventory. I'm writing that off whether or not it's sold. The cost of goods, which is cost of goods sold, COGS, I'm leaving out the S. So COGS is the accrual way. The accrual way is you only expense what has sold. So sold, that's a really key part of it. Cost of goods sold. So if the stuff is sold, you're taking the expense. Now, I'm a fan of the simple cash way. I've paid the money to Target, whatever for that stuff. I'm gonna take the expense right now. My accountant, however, is wanting me to do the accrual way. So I'm pulling these reports, but then when I go meet with them in March, I'm gonna say, hey, can we do it this way instead? And see what he says. <laughs> Whether or not you know which way you're doing it, I would just pull this report just so you have it. Now, there is a easier way to pull these reports than Amazon, because I don't know if you know this, but Amazon's reports are the worst. They're, it's the worst. But if you use Inventory Lab or Seller Board, you can pull the reports in those two and they will be already filled out with your cost of goods. But I'm gonna show you how to do it in Amazon just in case you don't have those programs. However, I think you might want them after you, I show you how much easier the other two are. In your account, again, we're gonna go to Reports and then Fulfillment. And here, it's the second one currently, but who knows, Amazon could change how they do it. It's called Inventory Ledger. I do the download way because I want the download because you're gonna, if you're doing it on Amazon, you're gonna need to work the file. So you need that um, file in either Google Sheets or Excel or Numbers or whatever you use, but you're gonna need the file. So we wanna do the summary view. I do by country. I'm gonna do the leave it on daily. And then we want custom date. So exact dates. And then I wanna know what I had on hand on the last day of the year. Because for the accrual way, cost of goods sold, I need to know what inventory I have that has not sold. So what, when you do your taxes, even in TurboTax, it's gonna say how much inventory did you have in the first of the year? And then how much did you end the year with? And that's how you figure out your cost of goods. Okay. Then I'm gonna hit request download. It's gonna download. Now, while I wait for this to download, this is only gonna show my FBA stock that I have in stock with FBM, it's really tricky. I can't even pull the report, and I'm pulling this report on the 8th. I can't even go back and pull it because 
the way you can pull it in Seller Central, you go to reports and then you go to inventory reports and you can see your open listings report. So this is gonna be all the listings that you have, but as you can see, it's pulling my reports every day. It's gonna pull all these reports. So I can't even go back. The furthest back I can see is the fifth. So what is that, like four days of data? So for FBM, you're gonna to have to possibly manually look at what you have listed or what you had on stock on shelf. It's gonna be a little more tricky, unless you use seller board or inventory lab, then it's super easy. I don't know how to pull. This is the only, the open listings is the only one that I found. If anyone watching this video knows how to pull in Amazon specifically, not the other two, because we know how to do it in the inventory lab and the seller central, but if you know how to do it in Amazon for FBM, please comment and let us know because I, like I said, this is the only one I could find. So I'm not sure. Going back to my report, my fulfillment report. So here's what the report looks like. It's kind of messy, but what I do is I want to know how much was ending the warehouse. So you see this, this column right here. All I'll do is let's just drag this over. Now the way I make my SKUs, you can see this one I got a grocery outlet for $1.99. So then I can do $1.99 and go down and put in what I paid for everything and then make another column total which would be the cost I did times how many I had. And then it's going to give me the total. And so I would go through and I would do all of this for um, everything that I have. And then it's going to tell me um, my total cost of goods that I had on hand on the 31st of December. So the end of the year, again, super complicated. But if you use inventory lab, let's jump over and see how easy that one is. Elisa Jackson in the Q4 Bolo group shared with us how you can get this report. So it's pretty easy, you'll see, but I just wanna give a shout out to my community members. So YSG community member, Alicia Jackson, thank you again. You just go to reports and inventory valuation, simple as that. You wanna put the day. So again, we're gonna do a view, then export. This is going to tell me everything that I have in stock, both FBA and FBM, and the costs are already entered. Because I don't use Inventory Lab for FBM, I will have to enter those cost of goods into the sheet, but it's already ready. If you already do it in Inventory Lab, already ready. Called Inventory Evaluation, it's already there for you under reports, so that's super easy to run. I do have a 30-day free trial of Inventory Lab. The link is yoursellingguide.com slash IL. And then I have a two-month free trial for seller board. Again, your selling guide.com slash seller board. If you want to try either one of these out, I highly recommend them. I use them both. Um, they do two different things, but yeah, so I love it. And again, this is one of the reasons why it makes it super easy to just run these reports. Amazon makes things so difficult for no reason. So these other tools and softwares are making our lives easier. Okay. So in seller board, you're going to go to reports and then you want your stock history report here at the bottom. Again, we're gonna click the 31st of December and download. And you can see here, it's already got all of my cost of goods entered for me. So all I gotta do is total it up. Again, those two reports are super easy to pull outside of Amazon, but if you're only using Amazon, then you will have to do the little bit of work to get that file to work for you. Shout out to YC community member Liz Jackson for letting us know how to pull that report super easy and seller board. Okay, so I've already talked about different expenses. You do wanna make sure you're tracking all your business expenses. You gotta have everything separate. So your personal and your business need to be separate. There are free accounting out there like Wave Accounting, which is a free one you can use, or you can get QuickBooks um, Self-Employed or QuickBooks Online. If you do plan to hire a bookkeeper down the road, they usually always prefer QuickBooks Online. So definitely look into those softwares to keep your accounting. Um, you can also just use a spreadsheet if that's your thing. If you like spreadsheets and you can do it that way, you can track all your expenses there. But you want to have some kind of record of all your different expenses, including mileage. Mileage is another huge one that you want to make sure you're taking that tax deduction for. So Mile IQ is what I use. I absolutely love it. It is a no-brainer. It just is always running. So 
Anytime I'm driving, it's like, hey, we caught your drive. Now I classify it. Is this business? Is this personal? Swipe left or right. It's like a dating app. And there you go. Your miles are tracked. You can also track your trips to your doctor. If you volunteer, those are also tax write-off mileages. They're at different rates and Mile IQ has it all ready for you right there. So I recommend Mile IQ. Um, there's some other ones that are free out there and I think they're like free up to a certain amount or whatever. I don't care how you track your mileage. Just make sure you're tracking it. I'm not someone who's going to remember every time I get in the car and go somewhere until I'm like either halfway there or halfway through the day to track my mileage. So I definitely like that mile IQ is always running. And so I'm always recommending it because it's real easy to use. And I'm all about things that are easy to use. Hopefully this video has helped you in your income taxes and pull in all the different reports. It is not as scary as it seems. There, all the reports are there. All the expenses you're paid are there. You just have to make sure you have them. And that I think is the scariest part because we don't always take good care of our books or keep track of stuff. I mean, I have a bunch of receipts in a bag over there, so it's not always the best way of doing everything. But I hope it helps you pull those reports and, and or helps you like think about hiring an accountant or a bookkeeper. Like I said, it has made my life so much easier. I don't spend all year worrying about taxes like I used to, honestly. I would think about it every once in a while and it would just like kind of ruin your day, right? Because it's like, this big thing you have to do and you don't know about it. So it's been hugely beneficial for me to just hire that out. Speaking of experts, this week on the Your Selling Podcast, I have Mark Two of Not Your Dad's CPA. He's answering all the different bookkeeping questions as well as just tax write-offs. We talk about this stuff from a tax expert. So definitely subscribe to that channel on YouTube, Your Selling Podcast, or like it in any of your podcast players. It's wherever podcasts are found. Every Wednesday I have new episodes. So we're going over income tax all month of January. So definitely check that out. I highly recommend because it's gonna help you pull all these reports. It's gonna answer different questions. And most of all, the rest of the year, it's just hearing from different sellers who sell on Amazon. So I would love your support on the podcast if you're not yet listening to it. In fact, I would love to have you on the podcast. You can email me at podcast at your if you would like to be a guest on the show. Anyone can be on the show. You don't have to be a big seller. Email me. I am talking about you. So I would love to chat with you. I think that's it for this video. I told you it was going to be a long one. Did I tell you? If I didn't tell you, it was going to be a long one. So hopefully this helped you and the timestamps helped you jump around if you come back to it in March or April when you sit down to do your taxes. These reports can be pulled anytime. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm looking forward to the year ahead, all the sourcing, all the Amazon, all the time. So definitely hang out and I'll be back here live for YouTube Live on the 22nd. See you then.